Oh, I first started taking interest in archery uh, when I was five after I saw a Tarzan film. Well, after the film I wanted my own bow and a neighbor's friend sort of made me a very primitive bow. I guess where, where, where boys play cowboys and Indians, it just never stopped with me. While working as a commercial diver on the west coast, hunting for diamonds, there were two pastimes you could keep yourself busy with this, either being in the pub all day or being outdoors. Now, being a desert town, there wasn't really much to do. Those years out there in the desert really enticed me to do more archery in depth, but we were out about 800 kilometers from the closest city, which was Cape Town. And uh, getting supplies, archery supplies, you know, feathers and your new bow strings and stuff was quite a, quite a mission to, to resupply. And I eventually started making my own arrows, self-taught, uh, made a lot of mistakes. And eventually I had to make my own bow strings. Uh, a good friend taught me how to do it back then. And uh, one thing led to the next and I thought, well, why don't I make my own bows? But you know, being out there in the desert, um, <laughs> there aren't really any trees growing. So I had to come down to Cape Town, uh, find suitable woods, which at that point I didn't really know much of wood selection and wood grain configuration and so forth. And I had many, many failures. I had some success, but what also counted against me out there was the climate. It was really not a good climate to, 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 to try and make bows in because you're right on the coast, you've got the desert hot air and you'll have a lot of moisture coming from the coast. So the two really clashed and it eventually led me to, to give up my career as a diver, a very lucrative career and started doing my own thing, being my own boss and just yeah, follow a dream. In a nutshell, it's, it's one of the dark arts. <laughs> Quoting another friend of mine that once said that um, bow making is, is really a, a war of thousands of inches and that that really is the truth. My approach to, to bow making is very much on an artistic level and, and on, a, on a technical level. I'd say more technical than anything. So you, you are literally struggling with thousands of inches, micro measurements that you are making a bow in. And if you, if you miss the mark with a couple of thousand of inches, you, you would have a different bow. You would have a bow that has a different draw weight to it. Uh, it'll either be a bow that's too light in draw weight or too heavy in draw weight. And you often have to start over again. very well-known South African bow maker who was really the pioneer of, of traditional archery in South Africa, a uh, friend with the name Derek Norse. Seeing the works of art that he created also flamed the creative side inside me. One of my favorite books is uh, a book with the title Howard Hill, The Man and the Legend. And Howard Hill is known as the greatest l legend of, of archery today. And I think he'll always be and I, I just think his life and his, his career as a bow maker and hunter and archer uh, is also known as the greatest archer of all times. Um, was one of probably one of my main inspirations uh, as one of the archery pioneers in, in America and which the world actually looks up to today. Back in 2000, a film production company approached me and um, that was really my, my entrance into the film industry. I honestly thought it would just be a once-off, you know, because, well, making a few longbows, English longbows for, for a movie, that's, that was just something that I never thought would actually happen. That first film production was, was a springboard for, for more to come throughout the years, and since, uh, to, since 2000 till this year, I've been in, in, in I've been involved in, in several different productions in, in different different ways, be it on technical level or or personally um, shooting behind camera or on camera. 
and that's where I come in. I, I, I like to, 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 to cater for these people's needs. As a greater part of how it's changed my life, um, looking back over the years, you know, so many industries in today's world just thrive on taking from the world. And in a minuscule way, I'd like to see myself as being a part of giving back to the world. So it's more of, of taking something out of nature um, and the beauty of wood that can portray and, and giving it back to mankind out there. Archery is much more about the giving than, than, than the taking, if uh, you understand the philosophical side of, of that. It's a lifelong quest and a lifelong journey. You know, you, you never reach a point where you, where you can say, I've now reached the, the end, or I, I now know so much. It just doesn't work that way. Um, and, I, and I think if your, if your entire approach around bow making is, is, is humble, um, you actually open yourself up for so much more that you can learn, so many lessons, life lessons that you can learn out of the whole experience. So yes, in, in essence, it's a, it's a journey. It has, it has changed me in many ways, Archery. It, it, it's a great character builder. I needed something for my life and in my life where you know, I can express my, myself through the creativity that I know I have. Archery being such a great part of my life since the age of five was, was really the only means where I could really express myself in, in, in that way. And it's been, a, it's been a very, very exciting and in, interesting uh, journey thus far. Um, I've learned a lot. It's, it's also humbled me in, 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 in many a way. I've learned a lot of life lessons and I've learned a lot of character traits in, in people and within myself as well. Well, I actually hope in the greater way that the bows I've made people have changed or touched their life in some way. If only a, a tenth of the people could have been touched by archery, not, not specifically my bows, but archery in, 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 it, in itself. I think that's that's quite successful. You know? That's more the essence of success for me, not how much you earn or how much you got in the bank or where you're going. You know, um, I just like to see people enjoying this this wonderful sport. I think if if, if a person truly is passionate about his or her sport, in this case archery. Um, your bow eventually becomes an extension of your body and of your mind. That, in essence, really uh, makes a person a better archer. It's basically how much time you spend with your sport. And definitely, yes, it, it does. There is a definite merging of man, woman and bow the more you practice it. It's a very mystical and a very mythical sport. Uh, quality is never an accident, but the result of intelligent effort, and uh, and that's really that's really my quest is, is trying to not create the the perfect bow. The perfect bow, incidentally, doesn't exist. You will never find the perfect bow, but to create a bow that can help a person to create perfect moments with it, that's that's more that's more what what archery is like. Every time you shoot the bow, every time you draw the bow back, every time you release an arrow, to me is, an, is a new experience. You have your, your, your days where you shoot exceedingly well and there's days where you shoot just as bad. Nevertheless, it still is part of, of, of the journey. Um, and, and it all really boils down to one's attitude to, to training sessions and in the end, your attitude towards, towards life as such, you know. Over the years, I've developed a fluid shooting style where I aim, draw and loose the arrow in one fluid movement and it works for me. The central part of a hardwood tree is called the heartwood. Now, a tree as it stands, most 
most of it is dead matter, it's dead cells of long ago. The only living really part is the, the vascular cambium that, that transports fluids and nutrients to the, the canopy and the leaves, which is a separate organism in its own. But the part that, that is really unwavering and, and strong inside the tree is the hardwood. And I just kind of figured out that's a more suitable name, you know. It's going back, gosh, 21 years ago.